Hello, I am Michelle with two L's. And I am Natalie the Red. And we are Force of Light Entertainment. Well, today we are going to give you our spoiler review. Spoil uh, lots of spoilers. Yes, but there was no way to discuss this movie really in any fun measure without giving spoilers. And plus, pretty much a, a lot of the people have seen this movie because it's doing, it's got the second biggest box office ever for opening weekend. Um, so it, it's doing well, but yes, yeah, spoilers. So if you've not seen this movie, you might want to come back and check this out later. But we are doing our spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, and for those of you who have not watched some of our reviews, we do them this way. We tell you our initial thoughts of the movie, what we liked, what we did not like, and we finally give what our... What we hated. Uh, no, not... Well, so, sometimes it is hated, but but most of the time just didn't like. But it's then, not that extreme. But then we also give you our rating of the movie. So I will start with my initial thoughts of this movie. And that is that it is by far the best of the three Spider-Man movies that have been made with Tom Holland. That's that's That was my initial takeaway from the movie. Natalie, what were your initial thoughts walking out of the theater? Well, I have only seen the one Tom Holland movie. Oh, you didn't see the second one. I didn't see the second one. So I've only seen the two. But I... As a viewer, I really enjoyed this movie. There weren't really many points in the movie at all that I was like bored or, yeah. you know, like, oh gosh. Yeah, it it I wish gets this going and moves. It yeah. does. It does at a nice pace, but not obnoxiously so. And yet there's really not tons of action, but yet it's interesting, which can be done, yeah. guys. I, I don't it, mind that. I th maybe yeah. that's why I, maybe yeah. that's why I appreciated it more. Yeah, so... Let, that's our initial thoughts. So let's get into what we liked about this movie. And one, okay, one of the things, again, this was my favorite of this trilogy. Uh, I really enjoyed, obviously, we all came into this, those of us who are paying attention, knowing what we were getting. The multiverse was teased. We knew that old Spider-Mans and Spider-Man villains were coming back. I'd heard the rumors. I loved uh, Daredevil, the Netflix Daredevil. So the first big cameo that popped up on the screen within like the first 15 to 20 minutes of the movie was Matt Murdock played by Charlie Cox as Daredevil. And even though it was brief, I the, the audience clapped. We I all clapped. I have to say, shout out to the uh, the theater at Phipps Plaza in Atlanta. It was rocking. It's, it's, <laughs> yes. It's like always such a good experience there. Not only do they have the nice chairs, but uh, people get very into it. I noticed yes. that that theater, these kind of movies. So yes, they like several points throughout this movie, the crowd would just like erupt. Yes. And, and, that, and like that clapping. And, and that was one of them. And I loved, I mean, he did it like he didn't skip a beat. Like he was the daredevil from the Netflix show. And I, I love when he caught the brick. Like I said, I'm a really good attorney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, of course, using his skills in that. So I, I love the Matt Murdock. But then what we were all looking for, uh, and, and of course, I loved when Green Goblin, well, all the villains, even, yeah. even, I mean, uh, they even got some cheers from the audience. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, the whole bridge scene with yeah. uh, Dr. Octavius, yes, when, when he was on there and hello, Peter, uh, you know, just he didn't skip a beat. It yeah. felt right out of Spider-Man 2 of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. So that was really cool. And it was just like, it was a cool concept to bring yes. all these, like, you know, the multiverse, like bring all these different, you know, from this set of movies and this set of movies and, oh, there's that bad guy from that movie and that bad. Yeah. You know, so it, it was very cool. Yeah. It was. And, you know, even when he's the one who says, you're not Peter, like he recognizes yeah. like, uh, okay. Something's off here. Yes. And of course, Dr. Strange is in it. He does, he does a fine job in, in his role. <laughs> It's fine. It's it's, it's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he was a vital part to making the story she's happen. She's not quite ready to roast, but she's not <laughs> quite ready to sing his praises either. It's, this is the way I just read it. Well, it was the most. It was the most. I think personal and emotional he's ever been because his character can be kind of cold, but you did feel he is, warmth he to Peter in quite, this movie. Quite cold. He is a little cold. He's a little. It's it's just it's cold and as as it was when they walk in, there's snow everywhere. That's kind of his heart. <laughs> he's cold, but oddly attractive. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so then we get the villains. Michelle's like, so anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll just move past that. We get the villains and the moment, guys, that we were all waiting for, that everyone was waiting for in this, in this movie is when we finally get the... Uh, we get the reveals of the old Spider-Man. Yes. And, and I loved... 
I love the way they were introduced because it was almost like an old sitcom show. You know, when they would like open the front door. door number one. Well, okay. well, not even that's more like a game show. Yeah. I mean, think of old sitcoms. They go to the door, they open the door, and there's a guest there, and the the fake canned laughter, ooh, yeah. or whatever goes off. Like that's kind of how it was in this movie. Of course, they use the magic. Uh, to open it. And I knew exactly which one was which when they came through. But both of those moments, I I really enjoyed. Of course, Andrew Garfield was was great again. But I think, and, yeah, and I love seeing was, him he was again. He's a really good Spider-Man. Yes, I love seeing him again. But I have to admit, my heart was the most warmed when we got Tobey Maguire returning to Spider-Man. Because it was that moment growing up at the time I did, it was like, that's my Spider-Man. Like, there he is. Same, same. But but yeah, like as someone that, I'll be honest, I wasn't really like pumped to go see this movie. You know, it was just like, you know, okay, I'll go see it. But I ended up, okay, I ate my words. I ended up really liking it. But uh, yeah, I, I had the same kind of feeling. Like when, when he came and everybody like, you know, the crowd went wild. Yes. It was like being at a sports game. And he probably got the biggest applause of anyone. I mean, that's what we, we all wanted. Yeah. And I felt the same thing. It's like, because I did actually really love those movies, those first Tobey Maguire movies. So it's like, oh, it, it was such a cute, like blast from the past or like from when you, I was, you know, really young. Yes, it, it definitely was. And, uh, you know, something too, as the, of course, the end battle and just kind of the banter between the Spider-Mans was cool to see all that type of stuff. Um, but I, I will have to say this because when the trailer came out, I mentioned in our reaction, I was concerned that this was getting so big that they wouldn't be able to make it feel contained. Right. And I can safely say after watching it, I don't feel that was a problem. I feel like the multiverse is open, but it was, it was a contained story. It's opened, it's there and it closes. Like, yeah. it, it's not like it got too out of hand where they got the portals closed. Well, it, where there was just too much going on. So, so my fear was not lived in this. I think they did a good job of opening up what they did and the story still feeling self-contained is what I'm trying yeah. to get at in, in I this, think so. this movie. And another thing I have to say um, because I'd have to say my Mary Jane is definitely Kirsten Dunst, who is mentioned in this. And I would love to I see know. at some point. I was her, a part of me was hoping like she'd show up in it somehow. And I love that he hints at that they made it work and have a family. So they give them yeah. a happy ever after, which, yes. which we all want uh, as fans. And I enjoyed that. But I will say this, that one thing I, that I appreciated in this movie about Zendaya's Mary Jane is I feel like, you know, sometimes they make changes with characters and you're like, ah, that, what's the point of that? But there's other times where they can kind of progress the character in a way uh, that I think is appropriate for the times. And, and I do like that her character, she's a part of the team. She like she, she's a helpful person yeah. like her and Zed. And, and I think that... Like, I actually enjoy that aspect with Mary Jane. I mean, yeah. I, I again, Kirsten Dunst will always be kind of my Mary Jane. But I, I do like that with this new version of Mary Jane, that she right. is very intelligent and a part of the team, yeah. so to speak. Uh, I enjoyed that aspect of and, it. And like a really good girlfriend. Yes. Yeah, she is. And I have to say, I still don't necessarily feel the same chemistry I felt between Toby and it's Kirsten. More like, it's more like they're really good friends. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it feels. But, but anyways, I did enjoy that aspect about her character. And let's see, the, the way it ends, I... I this is one of those stories that some people, I'm a big Batman fan. Batman's not the most merciful character, but I feel like this movie definitely goes the way Spider-Man's character is. He is a merciful character. And even in some of the deaths of the past different Spider-Mans that were there, you, even with Green Goblin, you felt Tobey Maguire, like he, he didn't want that to go that way. And yes. so, so I, I, so I actually appreciate how they kind of help them because that does feel true to who Peter Parker Spider-Man is. And, and I guess across different multiverses, they're all, they all have that kind of compassionate, merciful heart, which makes him Spider-Man and not a character like Iron Man or in the DC Batman type, type of character. There's that, or even Dr. Strange was just like, nah, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it just kind of makes them different, which yeah. I, I appreciate. I was actually kind of saying something similar to Michelle kind of the, the morning after we had seen it the night before. But that I think, you know, I always like Spider-Man. I, I Clearly, I enjoyed Peter Parker, you know, and his story of obscurity and, 
you know, so it's like, but I think I learned in this part of the reason, like, I really like him is because, you know, he just, he has he, that merciful, that he has merciful, that merciful heart. like just that goodness that even yeah. when someone has wronged him, he still doesn't, it's like you said, didn't want it to go like, he doesn't want to hurt that person. And you even know, when he has every right to, but he, it's like who he really is, is to choose like mercy. Yeah. And, so that, that was kind of just something that, like I kind of dawned on me, you know, about the character of Peter Parker. Yes. And and I think something, too, you get in this, this story when you have the three of them talking together is that like Peter Parker, they have these gifts. And of course, the, with great with great power comes great responsibility. Such a great quote, it, by the it, way. It's not easy being Peter Parker. And they've all had their struggles and they've all had their defeats and had to learn to overcome them. And so I thought that, you know, just. The three of them, when they were three to well, were together, cool. and it was like very cool. How they were able to advise him, like yes. maybe in their universes, you know, they, they've had some years on him, obviously, but yes. to be like, hey, you know, because they're so similar, but it's like, you know, been there, done that, like, don't go down that road. And, you know, they yeah. were able to advise him based on their life experiences. And I have to say, two jokes that genuinely worked for me. Never thought I would see Tobey Maguire's uh, Peter Parker. Uh, no, no, no! It was other way around. Andrew Garfield fixes Tobey Maguire's back. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and that was pretty funny. And then also, honestly, the line that made me crack up the most probably was when uh, Andrew Garfield says to Tobey Maguire, "So, do you have your suit, or are you just going to keep keep looking like a a cool youth pastor?" I don't know. Just yeah, the way oh, it was yeah, delivered. yeah, because he really did look like he, he, he did was like a cool youth he, pastor. That's what he looked like. So it was it was pretty funny. Um, so I enjoyed all all of that. It really worked for me. So it, is there anything other positive you want to think of or do you want to move into things I didn't necessarily like? I, th I think I think we uh, summed it up. Okay. So let's go into what I didn't like. And there's nothing necessarily that I, I don't like about this movie. Even though with that being said, this movie's not perfect, but I think it, it delivers where fans want. It gave, there were so many cheers in this movie. It gave... Sometimes Hollywood needs to see and get look what happens. Second biggest box of office opening ever. When you give fans what we want, <laughs> they get rewarded. And it was handled in a very, I think, a very good way. It wasn't just fan service, just in a way that didn't make sense. It felt like a very Spider-Man story and it made sense. But moving into, I guess, my negatives. Is I it, it's not just a negative. It's just honor for thinking the same thing. It's just I will say this: when I saw Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire back as Spider Man, it brought up what's been a problem for me with this new version of Spider Man, and that's that I've never liked him as much as the other two. You're like the problem is he's just not as good <laughs> as the other two. The other two are just so dang good. That's that's what I'm trying to say here. Um, and uh, no disrespect to Tom. Yes. And, and actually I'm going to, okay. So th that's kind of my only, my negative in it, but actually, I guess now I'm kind of, I don't know if this is negative. I mean, I think we're going back into positive. Oh, and also I'm not really sure. We're drifting back into the positive. I don't, I'm not Just really sure. I'm not really sure how I feel about Aunt May's death. I, I did not see I, that coming. I, I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah. It was like the youngest Aunt May in Spider-Man history is the one that dies. I Go think, figure. <laughs> I think maybe that death was just lame. It was it wasn't the best and unpopular take. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And of course, she delivers the the great line that we finally get in the third movie, of this trilogy. With great power comes great responsibility. So they make her kind of the Uncle Ben of this situation. But it's like, where's Uncle Ben? All, ben, all? like, did we ever get that explained? I have to go back and probably watch the first one again. But and it was just like she was clearly fatally wounded but like yeah. manages to get debris up off her and gets up and moves no no, no. that that's over. that it was internal that happens they literally call oh, those okay. type people walking dead they don't realize they're dying but then there was like blood but so that yes. was external yes that is external Not trying to get into it but it's movie. internal damage and they can kind of walk around until like as she says i just feel tired she doesn't even really realize oh, yeah. she's dying um, oh, I mean, it was, it was sad. It now was you're sad. just making it more sad. It was, it was sad. Gosh. It was a sad moment. And I, I don't know that I needed this moment in this movie to be real. Um, I mean, who doesn't love Marissa Tomei? Yeah. As Aunt May. And I mean, I guess they wanted him to have his uncle Ben moment like the others had, but it's like, why can't we just got that with uncle Ben? I, I don't know. Why was there no uncle Ben? <laughs> but uh, so that's kind of, my, I guess, my only negative in the situation. You're saying Uncle Ben can go. Well, I mean, I, I guess like... I'm just used to Uncle Ben going. 
But because now I really, at the end of this, of course, he has to, in order to fix everything, Dr. Strange has to cast the spell where no one will remember him. And it I felt like a very complicated spell, by the way. I felt they had a, a, a kind of touching moment as a goodbye. Like you could tell Dr. Strange, uh, again, had warped towards Peter Parker. Yeah. Um, but then also, of course, he has to say goodbye to MJ and, of course, his friend and everything. Here's where I'm getting at. Again, this isn't necessarily a negative or positive. Actually, it's a positive. I think it's going into a positive. Some of my complaints over this trilogy have been that Tom Holland Spider-Man just felt like Spider-Boy and kind of Iron Man That's Jr. True. Yeah. And and this movie, to uh, my pleasure, I guess, kind of fixes that. Because by the end of it, it's the first time I felt like he was Spider-Man. Like he, yeah. he had earned that title. Like he was not no longer just a boy, but he was like a man. And I felt bad for him because he's so on his own by the end of this. Uh, by the end of this movie, but then also he became the butterfly. He he did like he's truly. I think, I think clearly they're they're trying to set up three more movies, and I feel like I could very well end up enjoying the last like from this point on more than I did the first two immensely more. That that's kind yeah. of what I'm trying to say because. I believe too by you by doing what they did, uh, causing everyone to forget who Peter Parker is, they've kind of allowed him to be removed from being under kind of the Tony Stark yeah, kind shadow. of shadow and MCU shadow. And he could still go be a part of it, I guess, maybe if they want him to. But I feel like now he's set up to truly be the Spider-Man, like the 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 friendly spider who protects New York. That he was born to be. That he was born to be. And I feel like it took us three movies to get there, but but yet we're here. So, yeah. and, and I think, you know, of course, Tom Holland, because they started with him so young, they can do three more movies and and us follow that. So I, I feel like, I guess, again, I was Started saying- from the bottom and now they're here. That's why I said what I was saying was kind of a negative and a positive, because uh, it's kind of a negative of how I felt about the first two, but I feel like one, this movie was very enjoyable and good, but it set up, it set him up to be the Spider-Man that I've wanted and, and didn't feel like I got in the first two movies is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I just, I did not enjoy that, the, that one. Oh, I didn't I either. At, the first, like, she saw the like, first one. Like at all. Yeah. I, I did I not. Mean, I was baffled. Did in the I was baffled at how much I, he just didn't feel like, like Spider-Man. Oh, what is me. this? What am I watching? Yes. But, but by the end of this one, yeah, he feels like so Spider-Man. And to me, this movie out of the three movies thus far felt the most like a Spider-Man mm -hmm. story. And I really enjoyed it because Spider-Man is an amazing character yeah. has always been my favorite Marvel character. So I'm just excited as a fan to get the Spider Man, and that's saying that we because, that we want because I hate spiders. <laughs> yeah, but I would say that yeah, like that, like in the past, yeah, he probably is my favorite Marvel character. Yeah, definitely, I and mean, he's definitely the biggest Marvel character ever. Uh, I mean, people love Spider Man, so that's kind of it. So now let's give our rating of this movie. We rate in hoots, and it's based on our level of enjoyment of this yes. movie. Uh, Natalie, I'll let you rate first. What are you gonna rate? I'm going to give it four and a half hoots. Oh my gosh. She like took mine. I was going to give it. We have, we have a uh, ESPN. Do you know what? I, a, that was a joke. Michelle, you I'm, catch I'm, it. We have ESP. Okay. I, well, okay. I, I was going to go with the ESPN. I, I was still just debating in my mind, my hoots here because I was going to serious. I was going to say four and a half. Because this movie, as far as a movie standpoint is by far, is not a perfect movie. No. But we rate on enjoyment level. Yes. And I did genuinely enjoy this movie. So I'm debating between four and a half and five hoots. Oh. Um, Somebody's feeling generous today. Maybe I play it safe and go, you know what? It's Christmas time. I'm going to give the movie five hoots. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun to watch this in a theater with the with the audience clapping and it was, cheering. It was, a, it was a fun experience. It was. It was. It was a very fun experience. Good time. And again, I I I really. It was by far the best of this trilogy. And it, it by the end of it, I feel like he's finally the Spider Man I've been wanting. So so I feel like it. it and it just it just was a. I just enjoyed it. It was good. I we it. we liked it. We did. We liked if it. You can't tell by now. But yeah, that that's kind of it for our spoiler review of Spider Man No Way Home. Uh, what do you guys think? I'm sure you guys have seen it if you've watched this. 
Um, share your thoughts below. Uh, and if you're not yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also give the video a thumbs up and hit the, uh, the notification bell. That way you're always notified as soon as we post a new video. And thank you for stopping by. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I love how she adds that. Um, and Merry Christmas to everyone. We hope you have an awesome Merry, Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Yes. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, remember to be, be a, a force, force of, of light. light. All right. Bye, bye guys.